If you do not give the market a story to talk about, they will create your brand story for you. Welcome to the Personal Branding Podcast with me, Olive Kashara, and today we are talking about how to create a personal brand story. Your personal brand story is your unique narrative that talks about who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. It's sort of um, a culmination of everything that we've been talking about since the beginning of this podcast. I know many people have been wondering, Olive, we just want to know how to package our personal brands and market it to the world. You're over here telling us about passion and purpose and all these somewhat deep, unnecessary things. Can you just tell us how to package ourselves? So here we are, and we are going to focus on how to package your personal brand by storytelling. And why is a personal brand story important? I remember at the beginning of this podcast, I said, your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And if you do not define what that thing is that people are saying about you, then they'll say all sorts of different things. So your personal brand story is what you will use to curate or to influence how other people perceive you, how other people relate to you, and what they relate to you in terms of what you do and why you do it. Purposeful storytelling is not just show business, it's good business. And even if you look at brand marketing in general, a lot of organizations have moved away from selling products to selling experiences and selling stories, right? A good example of how brands have used storytelling to sell their products is when you look at airline ads, for example. Um, Emirates comes to mind, and I've, this is not a paid ad campaign, I promise. <laughs> but when you look at the Emirates ads, they're not really selling a destination. They're selling the experience of being on, on their nice flights and being on business class or first class and how the people who are on, on those airlines are just pretty and happy and pleased with life. And that's what sticks in your mind as opposed to, let's say, what's the cost of a ticket from Kampala to Dubai. You start thinking about the experience and that becomes a differentiating factor as to whether you're going to use Emirates or another airline. And they all have the same narrative. Even when you look at Qatar, it's giving you a nice experience. So it's really about what resonates with you, what storyline resonates with you most that's going to make you buy into that product. Another good example is phones. The biggest differentiating factor with phones nowadays seems to be their cameras. And everybody wants to show how their cameras are more futuristic and are better than the next guys. So what do they do? They don't feed you with gibberish about the pixelage and the lens and all these things that are behind the camera because that's stuff that we will forget. What they do instead is they show us live experiences of people being happy and those moments being captured. What they use instead is moments of you know family spending time together or guys are out partying and those are the stories that stick in your mind so when you're starting to think about what phone to buy again of course one of the determining factors will be the type of camera that phone has what you remember is the stories behind the cameras as those phones are being advertised in the same breath why influencer marketing has become all the rave right now is because influencers content creators personalities and celebrities are able to bring brand products to life through the different stories they tell by how their products are being used in their everyday lives right which makes more sense for organizations and companies than what they used to do before by just using a simple model on a billboard or on a tvc and even then, still, those TVCs used to tell stories. So I'm really selling the importance of, of storytelling here, and I hope it's making sense to you. Now, why is this important for personal branding? When you think about the personal branding process, always think about it akin to branding any other organization. You're the organization that we're discussing here, right? It's me, Inc., and it's you, Inc. So it's also important that as you're communicating your personal brand, you give and you tell a compelling story that will be authentic, that will be memorable, and that will ensure that you always stay top of mind for what you do and why you do it. Having a compelling brand story sounds very exciting, right? But the big question is where to start. There are three main components that you need to keep in mind when you're creating your personal brand story, or rather when you're crafting your personal brand story to ensure it's as cohesive as possible. We shall start with your personal brand attributes. Like I said in the previous episodes where we talked at length about strengths, your strengths are your God-given talents and you're more likely to achieve near-perfect execution by focusing on your strengths as opposed to trying to develop your weaknesses. Now, your strengths are your brand attributes in essence. 
So once you've identified your strengths, and if you do not know what your strengths are, please go to the previous season. It has a couple of links that can help you find out what your strengths are. If you don't know what your strengths are, find out what they are. Ask around. Do, do some of the psychometric tests that are there so you can find out the things that make you stand out, head and shoulders, above the crowd. For example, I would say some of my differentiating attributes could include communication skills, being very meticulous or being a perfectionist, which can also actually be a strength and a weakness at the same time because there is a bit of procrastination in perfectionism, right? But I try, I try to emphasize or to focus on the positive side of being meticulous. Um, and also my ability to sort of strategize and focus and, you know, what's, what's that? Stay in power. When I decide this is what I'm doing, I will not stop doing it until it is complete. I, re I rarely give up halfway, right? And I would say that those three key attributes have been the things that have differentiated me from my competition, the things that have made me stand out from everybody else, uh, the things that have made me get to where I am faster and also be able to stay there and stay ahead of the pack, right? What are your differentiating attributes? What are those things that make you stand out? What are those things that play on your talents? Do you know your talents? Those things that you focus on that you know when you develop will actually make you more distinctive than everybody else. So you always start your personal brand story by focusing on your strengths, by focusing on your differentiating attributes so people can see right off the bat that thing that makes you unique from everybody else. After your differentiating attributes comes your mission statement and your values. Your mission statement and your values are akin to your purpose. And again, we talked about purpose at length in the previous episode. If you want to unpack purpose more, please have a look at it. And hopefully that episode will help guide you towards discovering your purpose. Now, why is it important to have your mission statement and your values? Again, you know how when you go to banks, they have their mission statement and their values written out there for everybody to see? Your mission statement and your values are your guiding principles. They're the things that you stand for. They're the levels below which you will not fall. They're the reason you do the things you do. They're the things that set your soul on fire. They're the things that sort of highlight what you want to achieve in your life, right? My mission statement is to help people become the best versions of themselves, whether it is through my training, whether it's through podcasts such as this, whether it's through the content that we spread through Couture Africa. I've been able to ensure that everything that I do feeds my purpose or feeds my personal mission statement. So have you figured out what your purpose is? Do you know what your mission statement is? Do you have your values in place? Do you even know what your values are? Now, once you have your mission statement and your values, which speak to your purpose, the next thing you want to highlight is your unique selling points. Again, just the an organization knows what about its services and its products stand out from its competitors, you as an individual should know what about you stand out from your competitors. And in one of the upcoming episodes, we shall talk about managing your competition as you develop your personal brand. So please stay tuned for that one. Once you have all of these elements in place, it becomes very easy to craft a compelling brand story, a story that will ensure that you're memorable, that you're top of mind, and that people remember you for the right reasons. Now, remember, at the beginning of this podcast, I said that we all have a personal brand. You have a personal brand. I have a personal brand. Whether it's intentionally curated or not, when people think about you, they will think about certain things. And the purpose of creating this personal brand story is to ensure that you influence or you have some control over what people think about when they're thinking about you. And since you have to tell a story, make sure you tell a good one. Ideally, your brand story should be cohesive, it should be aspirational and at the same time authentic, and it should be in a nutshell, communicate who you are and what you do. The easiest way to put this out to the world is through your elevator statement, like I said earlier, and through your personal brand statement. I will give you an example of my elevator statement. But first, what is an elevator statement in the first place? Your elevator statement is your 30 second self-introductory statement that says in a nutshell who you are, what you believe in, and why you're there. You can make it as long and as short as you want. For Olive who speaks very, very quickly, mine can tend to be a little bit long-winded. But in summary, it sort of is a way to let people know a bit about you before even they get to interact with you properly. For example, when I need to introduce myself to people or to strangers, I always say, my name is Olive Kashara. I am an image and brand consultant at IWO Consultancy where we offer individual consultations and corporate workshops on professional image, business etiquette, customer communication, as well as personal branding to help individuals and groups overcome self-imposed barriers that will prevent them 
from becoming the best versions of themselves, right? So in that short statement, I've been able to highlight on who I am, what I do, what my unique selling points are, and what I believe in. So as you're trying to curate or create your personal brand story, remember that it's something that should be short and concise that you can be able to communicate to others in 30 seconds or under. Why is storytelling important? Storytelling is the most powerful way to bring brands to life. If you think of Eliud Kipchoge, his slogan is no human is limited. If you think of Barack Obama, the first thing you think about is yes, we can. If you think about our governor here in Nairobi, the first thing you think about is let's make Nairobi work. So those slogans that personal brands, that public figures associate with their personal brands tend to be what come to mind when you think about them first, right? In the same breath, just because you're not a superstar celebrity doesn't mean that you shouldn't have your own little slogan that you live by. Something that sort of is the reason you get out of bed every morning and that thing that you want to ensure you communicate to every single person in every interaction. In the previous episode, we talked about personal brand visibility and the different avenues that you can use to ensure that your personal brand is more visible. But then I know that the question that comes to mind is, so we have these platforms, but what are we talking about on these platforms, right? In comes your personal brand story. In fact, a lot of times when clients come to me for individual consultations, one of their biggest challenges is, I have the social media platforms, yes, but what do I talk about? Because they still haven't created or curated their personal brand story that will help feed content in an easier way and in a way that is more sustainable and that in a way that is authentic and that's easy to just sort of keep flowing day upon day, week upon week, right? So where do you use your personal brand story? Obviously, one of the first places to use it is on your social media platforms. It can be a self-introductory statement on your LinkedIn profile, on your Facebook page, on your Facebook profile, on your Instagram page, on your TikTok handle. All the social media platforms that you're on, you can use snippets of your personal brand story to sort of introduce yourself so people can get to know right off the bat who you are and what you are about. Like I mentioned, your personal brand story also speaks to your content. I use myself as an example. So yes, I do have a very intentional podcast that feeds to a lot of my social media content. But the reason this works is because initially my core brand is all about helping people become better versions of themselves, right? So why running a podcast becomes an easy, obvious next step is because I'm able to use this platform to communicate what my brand story is about. So you could either choose to go the podcast way, you could choose to write a blog. I actually have someone who reached out a few weeks ago saying that they want help with their podcast. And my first question was why? Not why do you want help, but what is your why in your having a podcast? What is the purpose? And even I've even had people ask me, why are you doing a podcast? Well, for me, there's many obvious reasons being a consultant, but for different people have different whys. It could be because... I'm a content creator and I want this to be an avenue to make money. It could be because I have thoughts and opinions that speak to what I believe in. It could be because I've been struggling with information about this particular area of my life and I have found that when I start having these conversations with other women or other men, they're very interested in it and I just want to be an instrumental or a facilitator or a tool to be able to have those conversations had. There could be very many whys, but you'll always find that that why will or at least should speak to what your personal brand story will be you can also use your personal brand story to bring your website to life right so if you're an entrepreneur if you're a creative if you are a consultant a personal website is always a great way to get people to know you for who you are away from the business that you run or away from the services that you provide my website is olivegashara.com you can also use your personal brand story in sales pitches Because at the end of the day, people don't buy into products and services anymore. People buy into people. And people tend to do business with people that they like. And the easiest way to get people to like you is by telling a compelling story. When you tell a compelling story, they're either able to resonate with you, one, or get fascinated by you, two, or look up to you, right? But for whatever reason, they'll be like, I like that person. There's something about them. Because they get to know a bit more about you. And in a world now, especially, where people want to get to know people a bit better, don't get to know the people that they're doing business with a bit better, as opposed to 10, 15, 20 years ago, where it was just about your credibility and ability to, de- to deliver X, Y, Z. It's 
Who's the person delivering X, Y, Z? What are they about? Do we have the same values? Do we have the same ethos? Do we stand for the same things? So even as you're doing your sales pitches, somewhere in between as you're giving those, as you're selling your products and services, find a way to tell your story. Find a way to have people relate and connect with you as an individual. Because then you will find that you get closer to yes, you get closer to the close, and you actually create strong, authentic, and real relationships with your customers and with your clients. You can also use your personal brand story during networking events, at interviews, or in any situation where you're asked to talk about yourself. So when someone asks you, tell me about yourself, you can say, well, my name is Olive Gashara. I'm an image and brand consultant at IWO Consultancy, where we offer individual consultations and corporate workshops on professional image, business etiquette, customer communication, as well as personal branding to help people become the best versions of themselves because I'm really passionate on the personal and professional development of individuals because I think that helps you not just elevate yourself at this and this level and da, da, da. you get what I mean, right? So you, you get to talk about your business, you get to plug in what you do, you get to talk, talk about what you're passionate about, you get, can even start talking about your values. So really use your story to communicate who you are in a real way. And when you go for networking events and you start talking about yourself and what you do, you become more interesting, right? Someone will ask me, for example, again, I like to use myself as, exam as an example, is, you know, so what, is, what does an image consultant do? Or an image and brand consultant? And we'll talk about, yes, we do individual consultations and corporate workshops, ETC. And someone again will say, you know, so what's that like? And I'll start giving them random stories about my experience creating a podcast or oh, I need to add I'm a podcaster in my self-introductory statement, don't I? And I'll start talking about either my experience creating podcasts or my experience training this amazing group of people when I was in session last week. I'll use anecdotes and interesting tidbits about my life that will make me seem more interesting. I say seem because I personally don't think I'm that interesting. But then you find that once you have your brand story and you have the stuff that you normally talk about, you become the most interesting person in the room. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So ensure that you are feeding people interesting content. So when they're talking about you, Jane, when they're talking about you, Mary, when they're talking about you, Georgina, they're talking about interesting, fun things. Also, make yourself more interesting by consuming interesting and engaging content. This could be what you watch on TV, what you engage with on social media, what you research, what you're reading. And make sure that it also ties back to your personal brand and who you are as an individual. So that when you're engaging and when you're having random conversations it's random conversations that add value to people's lives in fact one of the most important skills that anybody can and should have is the ability to have small talk i believe that small talk is the most important conversation that you can have you should be able to talk to a tree about the tree and let that tree live there feeling like it was the most important conversation or the most interesting conversation that they've had so when people engage with you Make sure you make it interesting and when you do tell your story, tell a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Personal Branding Podcast where we've been talking about crafting your personal brand story. And don't forget to share, share, share with your friends and anybody that you think will benefit from this content. And I will see you in the next episode.